A very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor, and let us start the bulletin with the headlines. Jammu and Kashmir governor calls a all-party meeting today to discuss situation after imposition of a governor's rule, approves a state administrative council, reviews major matters pending approval since BJP PDP government collapsed. Prompt investigation being done in fresh revelations in the Panama Papers leak, says Central Board of Direct Taxes. Media reports reveal 12,000 fresh documents linked to Indians whose names did not appear in the 2016 leak. China and Nepal signed 14 agreements ranging from power, water resources to cement production after talks between Xi Jinping and KP Sharma Oli in Beijing. Pact on a railway network connecting Tibet with Nepal also linked. European Union's retaliatory tariffs on U.S. goods comes into force. Duties on $3.2 billion worth of U.S. goods in response to Donald Trump's decision on import taxes on steel and aluminium. India, too, had imposed import duty on certain U.S. goods on Thursday. And Argentina on the brink of World Cup elimination after being trounced by Croatia 3-0 on Thursday. France enter pre-quarterfinals with win over Peru. Australia-Denmark match ends in a draw. First up, all the news from Jammu and Kashmir, uh, where Governor N.N. Bora has called an all-party meeting in Srinagar today to discuss the situation in the wake of the implementation of governor's rule in the state. Now, heads of uh, all political parties have been called for the meeting, which will be held at the Raj Bhavan. This will be Bora's uh, first interaction with the political parties after assuming uh, the reins of administration in the state. Jammu and Kashmir was placed under governor's rule on Wednesday, a day after the PDP-BJP government collapsed as the BJP snapped its three-year-old alliance with the regional party. Meanwhile, the governor apprised the establishment of the state administrative council and also reviewed all the major matters which were pending approval of the chief minister when the PDP-BJP government collapsed. Meanwhile, in the wake of increasing encounters and counter-militancy operations in Kashmir, the National Security Guards are likely to be deployed soon in the valley. A team of NSG has been stationed in the Kashmir Valley for quite some time and is undergoing rigorous training on the outskirts of the city. The decision for their deployment in the counter-terror operations was taken by the Home Ministry recently and they will put to use soon after their acclimatization program is over. The centre has banned the new offshoots of terrorist organisations Al-Qaeda and Islamic State under the stringent Unlawful Acti Activities Prevention Act. Both Al-Qaeda in Indian Subcontinent or AOIS and ISIS-K, which is an Afghanistan-based affiliate of IS, have uh, been declared unlawful by the Union Home Ministry. The ministry said that they were found to be radicalizing Indian youths for global jihad and encouraging terror acts on Indian interests. The stringent anti-terror law, that is Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, provides the strict penal provisions to deal with banned organizations and their members. And in order to prepare a roadmap for implementing the drone technology in our country, the government will set up three committees to help setting up a task force. Now, according to the Civil Aviation Ministry, the committees would separately make their recommendations on manufacturing and the licensing of drones, airspace and air traffic management and policy and law-related issues. The decision was taken during the first meeting of the Drone Task Force, which was chaired by the Minister of State for Civil Aviation, Jayant Sinha. The 13-member task force is expected to submit its report on the unmanned aerial vehicle technology in six months. The report will focus on research and developments of drones, their acquisition and commercialization, preparing a regulatory framework as well as preference for Make in India.
And on to the other top story of the day, the government on Thursday confirmed that it is looking into fresh revelations in the Panama paper leak case. Now, this came after media reports highlighted the presence of close to 1.2 million fresh documents, uh, out of which 12,000 were related to Indians whose names were not disclosed in April 2016. The Finance Ministry confirmed uh, that the case is being promptly looked into by the multi-agency group. The Central Board of Direct Taxes said that prompt investigation is being taken in uh, the fresh series of cases pertaining to Panama Papers. It said that the Panama Papers leak case involving 426 persons have been already investigated by the Income Tax Department and the other member agencies of MAG. The documents uh, detailed the actions of uh, Musak Funeska, which is the legal firm at the center of the tax evasion controversy. The Panama Paper leak case uh, were originally revealed by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists in April 2016. On to some other news now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will lay the foundation stone of a Vanidji Bhavan, a new office complex uh, to be constructed for the Department of Commerce in Delhi today. The building, according uh, to the Commerce Ministry, will accom accommodate about a thousand uh, officers and other staff and uh, will be environment friendly. It will be a completely paperless office with modern facilities such as a smart access control, video conferencing and completely networked systems. Now, according to the statement, over 56% of the 214 trees on the plot are either being left untouched or are being replanted in the same plot. Estimated to cost around uh, 226 crore rupees, uh, Vanichi Bhavan is being built on a plot of 4.33 acres belonging to erstwhile Directorate General of Supplies and Disposals. The Commerce Department is currently housed in Udyog Bhavan. President Ramnath Kovind is in Cuba on the last leg of his three-nation visit. President Kovind and his wife Savita Kovind paid a tribute at Fidel Castro Memorial in Cuba yesterday. The president will hold a talk with newly elected Cuban president today. Now, four MOUs are expected to be signed between India and Cuba in the field of biotechnology, homeopathy and medicinal plants. And earlier on Thursday, President Kovind performed yoga asans uh, with the Suriname president on the occasion of International Yoga Day. Kovind will conclude his visit on 23rd. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj has said that India and European Union stand shoulder to shoulder and are united by shared values and principles in the midst of complex changes uh, to the global peace and security. She said this uh, during a community rec reception organized to honor Swaraj at the Centre for Fine Arts in Belgium. Now, Addressing the gathering, Sushma Swaraj further said that India looks forward to the Asia-Europe Meeting Summit, which is scheduled to be held in October this year where Vice President M. Penkaya Naidu will be leading the Indian delegation. In the midst of complex challenges to global peace and security, India and the European Union stand shoulder to shoulder, united by our shared values and principles. India looks forward to the ASIM summit, which is scheduled to be held in October 2018, where Vice President Sri Venkaya Naidu will be leading our delegation. We are confident that such regular engagements between India and the European Union at the highest political levels will further enhance our excellent partnership. Sushma Swaraj also hailed India's ties with Belgium, saying that as a robust democracy, we share values of liberty, equality, pluralism and respect for rule of law. She added that Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to the country in 2016 significantly revitalized the bilateral agenda of the two countries. On the 70th anniversary of India-Belgium diplomatic ties, India had the honor to welcome His Majesty King Philip and Her Majesty the Queen. Over the years, we have significantly expanded and deepened our bilateral discourse. Currently, India is Belgium's second largest export destination and fourth largest trade partner outside the European Union. And earlier on Thursday, Sushma Swaraj also addressed the European Parliament in Brussels on the occasion of the fourth International Yoga Day. 
She is uh, on the last leg of her week-long tour and before Belgium, she had visited Italy, France and Luxembourg. The External Affairs Minister will return to India tomorrow. And Home Minister Rajnath Singh on Thursday left uh, for a three-day tour of Mongolia, which is aimed at strengthening India's relation with the East Asian country. In a message on Twitter, the Home Minister before his departure said, leaving for Ulaanbaatar on a three-day visit to Mongolia, looking forward to further India's relations with Mongolia and strengthen security cooperation. Mongolia is an important strategic partner. India wants to realize uh, the huge potential of bilateral relations with Mongolia. And today, the Home Minister will participate in a groundbreaking ceremony of an oil refinery, which will be followed uh, by attendant, uh, attendant, attending a reception uh, being hosted uh, by the Mongolian Prime Minister. And on 23rd of June, Singh will call on the Mongolian President and also meet his Mongolian counterpart. He will also visit a Buddhist monastery there. The Union Home Minister will also visit the headquarters of Mongolia's Border Protection Force uh, on the same day before returning to Delhi on 24th of June. And India and the US will hold the first 2 plus 2 dialogue between their foreign and defence ministers in Washington on 6th of July. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and Defence Minister Nirmala Sitharaman will visit the United States to hold talks with the Secretary of State Michael Pompeo and Defence Secretary James Mattis. 2 plus 2 dialogue was agreed between the two sides last year during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Washington. Both the sides are expected to share perspectives on strengthening their strategic and security ties and exchange views on a range of bilateral, regional and global issues of mutual interest. And in breakfast news, the time for a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Hello and welcome to Security Scan. I am Vishal Dahiya and this week we will discuss the issue of Space Force being announced by the United States. The sense that, uh, that many in America ha have at this point is that the Russians and the Chinese are catching up and therefore if something dramatic is not done at, at this juncture, then perhaps it will be too late for America to think about space being at the final frontier for them. Our daily life on terra firma on, on the Earth is now dependent on space like, like never before. And if we, India or any other country, or the United States, doesn't protect its assets, then it's asking for trouble. We have abilities, we have to build upon, build upon them and, and multiply them. And we have to do it very fast. Rabindranath Tagore was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1913 for his book Gitanjali. In 1950, he composed the music and lyrics for India's national anthem, Jana Gana Mana. And when Bangladesh became independent in 1971, they chose Tagore's song, Amar Shonar Bangla, as its national anthem. Tagore's life and works have made him a cultural icon, studied the world over, even into the 21st century. Welcome back after the break. Well, pitching for more uh, pro-farmer practices, uh, Vice President M. Vankaya Naidu on Thursday said that loan waiver is not a permanent solution and in the long term it would affect the agriculture sector and in fact hurt farmers. The Vice President also called for making agriculture viable, profitable and sustainable to improve the conditions of farmers and ensure homegrown food security. Naidu was in Pune to inaugurate a national consultation on making agriculture sustainable and profitable at Vaikunt Mehta National Institute of Cooperative Management. He also called uh, for coordinated and focused action to double the farmer's income in the coming years. Let us do some 
prudent thinking apply our minds and offer solutions to improve the lot of farmers who are the backbone of our economy it is obvious that a concerted coordinated focused action is required on a number of issues that impact the growth of agriculture sector and the quality of our life of the people who depend primarily on this sector and earlier in the day the vice president also inaugurated the new building of pune municipal corporation addressing the event he said that the local bodies could always place citizens at the center of civic governance while reducing the interface between officials and citizens it should be ensured that the local bodies are provided with the three f's funds functions and functionaries for effective governance it should be noted that in the present digital age citizens are seeking prompt and quick action on every complaint or petition submitted by them to the municipal authorities simply put people want better and quality service And the Lok Sabha speaker has accepted the resignation letters of five Lok Sabha MPs belonging to the YSR Congress party. The YSR Congress party MPs resigned in April this year over their demand for a special category status to their state of Andhra Pradesh. At top international focus now the European Union has introduced retaliatory tariffs on United States goods in response to Trump administration's decision to impose stiff tariffs on european steel and aluminium exports the european commission in brussels gave final approval to levy new tariffs on a huge range of us products eu trade commissioner stated that there was no other choice but to impose tariffs of their own after the unilateral and unjustified action of the united states india had also on thursday levied import duties on certain american goods in response to us tariffs And the Chinese Premier Li Keqiang held a talks uh, with uh, Nepal's Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli on uh, Thursday in Beijing as both the nations agreed to enhance cooperation. China and Nepal signed 14 agreements including one on railway construction in the Himalayan nation. The railway line is uh, expected to connect Tibet with Nepal. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang said that his country is willing to work with Nepal to build an interconnectivity network across the Himalayas through the projects in ports, railways, highways, aviation and communications. The two sides are signed eight agreements worth 2.4 billion dollars ranging from hydroelectric to water resources projects as well as cement factories and food production. Nepal and China also agreed to strengthen people to people relations and partnership in tourism sector exchanges of socio cultural in various sectors and uh, dialogue on major international issues Li said that China was willing to make uh, joint efforts with Nepal to inject a new impetus into bilateral ties and cooperation the agreements came after KP Sharma Oli's extended talks with Chinese president Xi Jinping earlier And let's now get you all the action from the football world cup in Russia. Well on Thursday at the FIFA World Cup in Russia it was a day of major upset for Argentina because Croatia powered in the last 16 of the World Cup over the 3-0 route of Argentina in group D. Messi's side were outclassed by the Croatians. Well, a goalkeeper Willy uh, Caballero attempted a chip uh, over Ante Rebic that uh, backfired badly, allowing the striker to volley into an uh, exposed net in the 53rd minute. Well, second half goals are from uh, Rebic, Modric, and uh, also from Ivan Rak. Rakitic sealed the victory for Croatia and the result means that Argentina have just one point from two games and are on the brink of elimination from the tournament. Now their defeat follows an opening one all draw with Iceland in which Lionel Messi had missed a penalty and now even a heavy win over Nigeria in the final game on Tuesday may not be enough to send them through to the next round. And in a, another match yesterday France entered the pre-quarter finals beating Peru 1-0 in the group C encounter. Kylian Mbappe became France's youngest goal scorer in World Cup history when he struck in the 34th minute 
The goal helped France overcome and eliminate a resilient Peru to earn a spot in the knockout round. And Australia secured a valuable Group C draw with Denmark to keep their hopes alive of progressing to the knockout stage of the FIFA World Cup. Both Australia and Denmark scored a goal each. Denmark's uh, Christian uh, Eriksen scored an opener in the seventh minute to give his side a 1-0 lead. Australia leveled the score just before half-time and uh, before a referee awarded a penalty which uh, Jedina converted into a goal to level the score. And the draw means that Australia has claimed a point to keep their last 16 hopes alive while Denmark temporarily go to top of Group C on four points. And here are the three matches that are scheduled for the day today. Brazil will take on Costa Rica in the Group E match. The match will be held at 5.30 p.m. And the next match between Nigeria and Iceland in Group D will take place uh, at 8.30 p.m. India time. And the last match up for the day is Serbia versus Switzerland in Group E, which will be played at 11.30 p.m. All right, uh, Jyoti Ann Buret, a former national football player, is now joining us in the studio for more updates. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us, Buret. So it was uh, supposed to be a night for Lionel Messi to sparkle, you know, to do what Cristiano Ronaldo probably did for Portugal a day before. But uh, against, uh, you know, in the last game also, Messi had uh, missed a penalty kick and in yesterday's match also barely making an impact. Very lackluster performance by Argentina. Uh, Messi was hardly seen through the game. He didn't get much of the ball. And Croatia really outplayed them. They were, they were quality side yesterday. Argentina had no response to them. Absolutely. And uh, that also means that Argentina are at the brink of elimination from the World Cup. Which yes, is very I mean, sad. It all goes down now to the last game. And it depends on today's game as well. Hmm. How Iceland do. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, for a side like Argentina, they shouldn't have to hope on other teams uh, getting them through to the next round. Right. Uh, and uh, speaking about the second match, uh, France versus Peru yesterday, of course, uh, I, I was uh, saying on Twitter, everywhere it was there, France won the game, but Peru win, won our hearts. It was all over Twitter yesterday. You know, the team was knocked out of the tournament, uh, but ha they had their held, heads held high because uh, this is their first World Cup in about 36 years. Yes, what a brave performance by Peru. They really played their hearts out on the field yesterday. Uh, France, of course, did play really well. Uh, Mbappe, personally, was a standout. Uh, he, his skill on the field, his confidence <coughs> with the ball. For, the, for someone at that age, uh, he's someone who's going to be someone great in the footballing scene mm. uh, in the near future. And a good thing for France because uh, Kylian Mbappe became the youngest French player to score in the World Cup. And uh, speaking about the third match, Australia versus uh, Denmark, of course, this uh, one-all draw means uh, that uh, you know Denmark has uh, kept Australia's interest alive at the World Cup. But obviously, there are a lot of ifs and buts attached to it. But on the other hand, Denmark, uh, you know, uh, is on almost uh, uh, on pace uh, to advance in the World Cup. Yes, it was a very closely fought match, very fast-paced match. Um, but I think both teams will be happy with that result because both teams really played well. Mm -hmm. uh, Australia, of course, dominating the second half. But uh, Denmark uh, will be happy with that draw and will be happy to see themselves go through to the next round. Absolutely. And speaking about uh, today's matches, of course, uh, Brazil versus Costa Rica. And Brazil definitely would be looking to bounce back, uh, you know, last match, one-all draw, which was very frustrating uh, against Switzerland. But Costa Rica uh, also, you know, they started their campaign with a narrow defeat uh, to Serbia. Uh, so, uh, against Brazil, an uphill task, really, qualifying for the knockout stage? It's going to be a game with uh, the South American flair that we can expect. Both teams are going to be playing with a lot of flair. And uh, one would hope that Brazil mm. would rise to the occasion. They have a quality side. Uh, young players who, you know, the world is waiting to see them perform. Um, and, but Costa Rica, you can't put them down. They, they went down narrowly, narrowly in their first game. Yes. So it's going to be tough, but it's going to be a great game to watch. Absolutely. And... Uh the second match, uh, Serbia versus Switzerland, of course, uh, both look confident. Uh, this is going to be an all-European 
clash. Of course, Serbia must be confident uh, from their 1-0 win over Costa Rica in the opening game. And facing Switzerland again, uh, that also held up. Uh, you know, group favourites uh, Brazil to a draw. So that is also going to be a very interesting match today. Definitely. Serbia will be high on confidence. But, you know, it's going to be tough for them because Switzerland showed us how strong they are defensively against Brazil. And if they made it so hard for Brazil, I don't think it's going to be easy for Serbia today. Yes, so absolutely. it's going to be a very hard-fought game. Hmm. And the third match, Nigeria versus Iceland, of course, uh, Holding uh, Argentina to a surprise draw, really Iceland hoping to make it uh, four points uh, in uh, the Group D against Nigeria today. Argentina really have surprised. Uh, to me, they're the dark horses in this competition. Um, I expect them to win today and make Argentina's task very hard. Hmm. So a lot of people are going to be watching this game, um, mostly the Argentinians with uh, their, their you know, hearts in their mouths. Um, but. Iceland are a strong side and I expect them to beat Nigeria, who are a very young side today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ms. Puret, for joining us uh, and sharing your views on all the yesterday's matches as well, uh, today's uh, matches as well. And this is how the points tally look in the group uh, standing right now. That is uh, appearing on your television screens right now. Take a look. And well, it is time to take your leave, uh, but before that, well, the fourth anniversary of the International Yoga Day was celebrated on a large scale throughout the country and also across the globe as well on 21st of June, that is yesterday. So here are a few glimpses. Thanks so much for watching.